Hi there, and welcome to 60 for 30, a Magic the Gathering ultra budget project that looks to get you a playable 60 card deck for just around $30 in the paper world. Today we're going to be looking at a modern deck, but first I have a brief story for you. There once was a talent agent who, you know, as talent agents do, was just chilling in his talent office, doing talenty things, and in walked a family. And before he could even ask them what their act was, they sat down and started playing a game of magic. The dad versus the mom with the kids watching. No one's using sleeves or a play mat, playing on a rough, dirty concrete floor. The mom starts riffle shuffling her deck, which the talent agent can see is made of what appears to be 60 black lotuses. The son watches a dangerously full cup of Mountain Dew in his hand. The daughter stands behind her father and talks to him loudly about his hand and says positive things about the reserve list. The father plays a spell and to his horror the talent agent sees that he not only taps his land after casting a spell but also plays the card behind his land however when he realizes that the father is tapping his land to the left and referring to them all as tango lands despite the fact that they're all basic swamps he cuts in he can't take it anymore he says stop that's one heck of an act you got there what are you called and the father looks at him and says, the aristocrats. For the two of you who get that joke watching, I'm sorry it wasn't even good. And for those of you that don't get it, look it up. But our deck today is called the aristocrats. Basically, it depends on these cards, Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat, that have similar but not identical effects. Essentially, what they do is when a creature you control dies, they're going to give you one life, and more importantly, take one life away from your opponent. And we're going to play eight of these cards that have this effect, which will give us access to it consistently. In addition to those cards, we're going to run a lot of cards that die a lot. And it's not the worst thing in the world when they die. Maybe the best card in the deck is Bloodsucked Champion. For just one black mana, you're going to get a 2-1 attacker. It can't block, but it has the ability to return itself to the battlefield if you attacked with a creature this turn, which you're almost always going to be able to do. You can even attack with a Bloodsoak Champion, have it be blocked by one of their creatures, and then pay 2 to return it to the battlefield. And remember, ideally, with our Zulaport Cutthroats and Blood Artists, that'll be draining our opponent for life, in addition to attacking with a 2-1 creature. We also have two Katung Phalad and Blister Pod, both of which fill about the same role in the deck. They're nearly identical. Essentially, they're 1 1 creatures for one, and when they die, you get a 1 1 green creature token, or in the Blister Pod's case, a Scion token. And this is great because they die, triggering our drain effects, and then we get another creature that can die easily to trigger our drain effects. And we also have Young Wolf, that the first time it dies, you return it to the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. So it actually becomes a 2-2 two -two creature after they kill it the first time. And then it can die again, again, giving us multiple death triggers. And this is what we do with these. We have a few what are called aristocrats based on the card Cartel Aristocrat which is a sacrifice outlet you can do essentially as many times as you want and the great thing about these is if we have a bunch of creatures out and say viscera seer it doesn't cost us anything to sacrifice a creature so we could potentially just drain our opponents down for like 12 damage in one turn and scry a whole bunch while we do it or we can regenerate Verol's the scar striped um, who also gives our creature cards in the graveyard the ability to be scavenged to make our living creatures bigger. Evolutionary Leap is a huge card in this deck because you can pay a green and sacrifice a creature, which is usually going to be good for us, to get essentially another creature card. And then you can play that and it keeps the loop going and you'll never run out of creatures because you can always find more with Evolutionary Leap. We're only running two because it doesn't do well in multiples. If you draw more than one copy, it's essentially a dead card. But it is super strong at getting value out of this deck, especially since most of the creatures that we get can die multiple times, and sacrificing a creature helps us with our plan. And we're also running one copy of Bontu the Glorified. This card is made for this deck. For just three mana, you're getting a 4-6 indestructible creature with Menace. They can also help us sacrifice our own creatures to scry one and drain our opponents, which is absolutely silly. It can't attack, 
unless a creature died under your control this turn. But we have an awful lot of ways of making that happen. Bantu does it himself, but we also have our other aristocrat. So we're also going to run four Altars Reap to help us draw cards. We sacrifice a creature and play Altars Reap to draw two cards at instant speed, which is pretty good. Something to keep in mind about these sacrifice effects is that you can do it at instant speed in response to removal. So say they try and path to exile a creature, which would ordinarily exile it so you wouldn't get the death triggers you want. You're instead going to just sacrifice it to help you and fizzle their path to exile. So Altars Reap can be used for that, as can Viscera Seer and Varel's the Scar Striped and Evolutionary Leap, and even Bantu. We're also going to run some Bone Splinters. If you have Fatal Push, run Fatal Push instead. This is the strictly worse version, but it does help us kill some of our own creatures and is a very effective removal spell when we don't care about having to sacrifice a creature to make it happen. And then we're going to run one copy of Dictate of Erebos, which can lead to some absolute blowouts. In a perfect world, this would probably be a sideboard card. But we don't mind running one in our main 60 because if we get it out, it's going to essentially give us um, an alternate way to deal with creatures. Like if they have an Ojitai out and you can't target it at sorcery speed with Bone Splinters, you can flash in Dictate of Erebos, sacrifice a creature, and then they have to sacrifice their creature. Um, and we can do that as many times as we want. It's, it just helps in almost every matchup, and especially in some niche matchups where they don't see it coming, it can really give us the edge. Our lands are pretty simple. We're just going to run four Lanowar Wastes. But since we have a lot of one drops in black and green, this will always make sure that we can land them. It'll never come in tapped. And then seven forests and ten swamp. We have a pretty low mana curve, so we can afford to get away with just 21 lands. Some deck notes to keep in mind. This isn't an easy deck to play because a lot of times you're going to be having to figure out when's the right time to try and win through draining and killing all your own creatures. Generally speaking, you're not going to combo off crazily in one turn and drain your opponent for like 31 life, but it's the incremental value that you gain over time of slowly draining them down and then near the end of the game you can often hit them for 10, 11 damage out of nowhere. It has some really great matchups. Like Burn needs you to die as quickly as possible, but you're gaining an awful lot of life through your drain effects. So even if you gain like six incremental life, that's gonna give Burn a really hard time. And you have a lot of chump blockers that you don't mind dying for the Goblin Guides and the Monastery Swift Spears. Lantern Control, the kind of decks that land in the Staring Bridge so you can't attack with creatures. Those aren't really hard locks against this deck because we don't need to attack to win. Attacking helps us get a lot of damage through, but we can always just drain our opponents out. So because this deck plays strangely, it has some really good matchups. The problem with this deck is it is somewhat reliant on your creatures dying. You can just win as a creature deck, but if they land a rest in peace, then none of your creatures dying will actually die and trigger your effects, they'll just go into the graveyard. And that can be really tough. So if you're going to build a sideboard for this deck, sideboard not for certain matchups, but for certain hate cards like Rest in Peace, so that you have artifact destruction and enchantment destruction, so that you can win through those types of sideboard plays that your opponent will make. The other thing to keep in mind with this deck is that a lot of the times it looks like or feels like you're losing, but you're getting there. The come from behind potential in this deck is pretty fun and you rarely feel completely out of it. The price point, as always, in paper under $30, right around $29, and online is right around $4. These prices are including the Bantu, which is currently a $4, $4.50 card in the paper world. So if you don't want to run a Bantu and want to run an extra Viscera Seer or something instead, you can shave $4 off this price. And online, the Bantu is almost $2. So this can be a, like a $2.50 deck if you do it without the Bantu. I love the Bantu in the deck. I think it's super great and super fun to play with new cards and it's super good. But if you're looking to really shave price, you can definitely do it there. A few things to note with this deck. I mentioned the Cartel Aristocrat earlier. This is like the most classic Aristocrat 
build is to use white, and there are a few reasons to do that. Cartel Aristocrat is one. It's a great card for a deck like this. The main reason is Lingering Souls, which is super, super good, even in a deck where we don't want our creatures to die. But when we do want our creatures to die, getting four 1-1 one, one tokens that are very easy to die through blocking, can get in through damage attacking, um, and can be sacrificed to our sacrifice effects is really, really strong. Doomed Traveler is essentially a better blister pod type effect because we get a flying token from it that can ship through some easy damage. And then you can run Day of Judgment, which wipes the board, but if you have like four creatures out and two of them are Zulaport Cutthroats, it's going to do a lot of damage when you wipe the board, which is going to hurt your opponent more than you anyway. So you can definitely run white variants or even splash white and run a three color deck, but that will make the land more expensive and less reliant, which is why I went for the black green version. But feel free to tinker with it because this version is also very good. There's also a way to build this deck that I might do a separate video on that's built upon Rally the Ancestors and that type of combo. It's a little bit stolen from the standard deck that was pretty good probably a year ago. But what's going to happen is when all your creatures die, you're going to return them all to the battlefield with Rally the Ancestors. And if you read the card, you have to exile those creatures at the end of turn, which would ordinarily be bad. But if you have a sacrifice outlet, you can just sacrifice all of them, so then they go back into your graveyard. If you have Grim Horror Specs or Evisceracia out, you can hopefully scry and draw a bunch of cards through doing this, as well as draining your opponent, and hit another Rally the Ancestors and chain a few together, if one's not enough, and kill your opponent that way, which is super fun. Again, that's really a Abzon white, black, green variant. And again, I might do a separate deck video on that, but... Just keep that in mind, if you would rather play that way, you can definitely make that happen. And that's pretty much it guys, thanks for watching, thanks for putting up with my corny joke in the beginning, for the three of you that actually stayed through that whole thing, I really appreciate it. I'll be back next week with a return to standard, we've done lots of modern deck recently, but with Amonkhet coming out, I have my eye on a sweet black green minus one minus one token deck that I think will be super good, especially now that Felidar Guardian's been banned in standard so i'm excited about that hit the like button subscribe leave a comment i'll get back to you i've really enjoyed talking to people on reddit and in the youtube comments about these decks and if you have any questions just let me know have fun out there guys and gals that's what it's all about